Mr. Aditya Godkoli from class 9 on the topic Multi Domain Monitoring and Missing Link. And giving a brief introduction, Mr. Aditya is the head of product at class 9 and has worked on large breadth and depth of technologies from mainframes to embedded microprocessors, from real time operating systems to cloud infrastructure. He has been a founder in three startups with successful exits in two and specializes in working because of product and engineering. During his spare time, he enjoys playing football and is a self possessed mathematics nerd and loves playing Dungeons and Dragons. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Aditya and the product at class uh, Today, I want to talk about my dream, how it is done today. How it can be done, uh, what's missing today in monitoring, and what are the potential benefits you can actually realize as opposed to the state of the art. Uh, so, I'm going to take, take all of you through a scenario probably familiar, probably a bit too close to home, uh, probably in my style, style of art. Uh, so imagine that for your platform, it's like a BPA. Everyone has that. Uh, either it's in a BPA or some second order traffic being driven because of the game to your site. Maybe it's a big billion dollar sale or what a demand sale, etc. That's again driving a lot of traffic. Maybe it's the launch of something new, some big product with a discount deal for something. Basically, a very important day from the point of view of DevOps and monitoring and reliability and so And this is almost every engineering manager at the start of the day or maybe every day before. <clears throat> On top of that, it's your CEO or CEO of the center today. This time, we cannot afford any degradation. Any degradation equals loss of revenue. Now it is very important, so there's a lot writing on this. And this is basically your nightmare scenario where your latencies have jumped up, that impressions have gone down, and your company is losing it. So the day begins, you're all set, dashboards are going, everything is green, looks fine, war room protocol is set, everyone is on Slack, everyone is in the same room. Nobody is getting their seats and it begins. Slowly, slowly, the traffic grows. Your system is also scale up. Maybe it's auto scaling, also. It's working actually. Right. All dashboards are still green. Right. Traffic has gone up as expected. Each metric is tracking. Then, at that point, someone from your team decides, okay. Somebody leaves, it's that good. The monitoring team has actually left their seats. That's how good it is. But then someone from the product comes. Hey, by the way, I've seen a few like, negative activity on social media, etc. The app is becoming slow. Is everything okay? And you look at the dashboards, yeah, I mean, everything looks great. It's all okay. So say confidently. But at least as confident with real, then you know, the person can say, okay. But then, it the thought festers there. You've all been there. You go look through all the dashboards, and more deep again, it is that. Something has to be wrong. How can Twitter is telling me, but my dashboards are seen green. So you investigate and finally you find something. Ah, this particular part of the memory pressure is high. Find me something in it. What does that have to do with the tweets? What does that have to do with the latency? So trying to build all these mental models in your head and go guess what might be wrong. By the way, question What is the most reliable monitoring tool that you have come across? It's actually a rhetorical question. Now, answer. Twitter. I mean, that's why we get all the downtime information from it. This is not only that thing or two. Anyway, so, Twitter ladies, man. 
Decided more detailed information. May Twitter complaints are definitely increased and looks like the all coming from iOS users, who are also the most paying users for us. So, okay, now I'll give the credit to the series. So now we are thinking, is the problem only for iOS users? Or is the problem for requests that are going to that particular set of nodes or ports? Or is it a combination? What's happening? So, again, data from multiple domains coming together in completely isolated ways, each in your data to figure out what is the problem. And all this while, the latency that was high, high intelligence that got down, the nightmare scenario is being realized, and your MPTI. Is everyone aware of this term MPTI? Especially when things get critical, your dashboards become slow. Has anyone noticed this? Right. Just when you need that, yeah, I go to load now, it's going to take two minutes. So let's take a look at what the state of the art of observability is today. I want to break down observability into these two sections. There's monitoring, which primarily today way to start is for answering the question is anything wrong and if you find something then you go to debugging where you see where is it broken and why is it broken for monitoring people use metrics for debugging you use law of increases but as you have seen and it seems like everyone kind of relates to this as well this is giving us very high activity so what can we do about this? So one thing that is actually possible, and we will come to why it's not being done as well, is that you can actually include information about metadata of those metrics from different domains as part of the metric itself. Which means that the where is it broken question can be shifted left and be answered by one. Now what's the advantage of this? The advantage of this is that monitoring is super fast. Monitoring works on numbers. Right? Addition, subtraction, everyone knows. These operations are really fast in computers. Debugging is working on logs and traces. So there's a lot of parsing to do. It's almost impossible to get information out of this internet. Don't get me wrong, logs and traces are great for debugging. In fact, there are only tools work well for debugging, but they are a really poor choice for any kind of community. Okay. So what if we want to shift the question of where is it broken or find a cross section of things where it is broken into the monitoring. Okay. For that, you need to add a lot of labels into your metrics today. Okay. Labels like the, uh, what is the customer segment, etc. We will we'll see a few more. The point is that monitoring is your frontline business. Right? And you heard the uh, as if all you ever have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Right? In the war room, you are in a gunfight and you're bringing a hammer. That's what's happening. And that needs to change. So let's look at what these labels are and what the impact is. So, anyway, so you go back to your, so this guy is like the person who the person who can manage it, who is in it. So you go and say, okay, I have gotten this talk and we want to add labels. I am going to add these labels in the metric. So, oh, sorry, not possible. Cardinality is too high. How many of you have heard the cardinality along with this too high? <laughs> So let's look at what actually means. Now let's take a label like latency. Innocuous metric, sorry, a metric like latency, very innocuous metric. Uh, typically, what is done right now is that latency will be reported at this level, at the application. Right. Along with the metric, you don't have any other data. Maybe the service for which the metric is. 
But let's assume that you want to add a lot more metadata so that when the latency goes back, you have that information with you in your dashboards across whatever cross section you want to quickly identify the problems. And so you start adding it from the business domain you add maybe a customer category. From the product domain you add what is the client platform, iOS, Android, and Samsung TV. And maybe the region, geographical region from which the request is coming. Then from the application domain you add latency buckets, which is pretty common. And after that, what you also want is you want to add infrastructure domain tables, like what pod was this request of? Because then you want to know or when you know that the latencies are high, it would be great if you can directly also tell, okay, this is the pod, these are the couple of pods of which from which these high latency latencies came. Right. So if you I don't know if people at the back can see, but below is the combined set of labels. Okay. On the right, for each label, I have written a few kind of indicated unique values that the labels can have. Maybe you have 10 customer categories, you have 10 platform and 10 regions, and so on. Maybe you have scaled up to 1000 words. The total combination unique combination of all potential unique values is the multiplication of these which comes to around 3 million okay. the problem today why we can't do this very easily is because the monitoring metrics data sources cannot be in this level of identity either they just go down or you start getting response times for your queries in minutes which is Quite bad, especially in critical situations. So, I've kind of plotted this visually, like the problem that exists right now. As your ingest cardinality goes up, for tools, you know, Zoom, like Prometheus, and also the graphics, etc., up to a certain point, it scales pretty well, but then suddenly the cost really shows up. And when I say cost, I mean Cost of cloud plus the people needed to keep that thing running. Assuming that you have the people who are experts in that in the first place to be in. Right? If you see this section, even at where it's going straight up, right? Despite you pumping money into it, this section is completely blank. Because these tools are not equipped to handle this level of cardinality at all. Now there are certain tools which can. Data. But then this is the cost curve for data. So either you have to completely give up the idea of doing this multi domain monitoring, or you have to start paying bills in the order of a couple of million dollars a month. These are the only two options. And that is precisely the problem that last night solves with Clarity. So with Levitate, you want users to start monitoring what they should and not limit themselves to monitoring just what they can. So Levitate is a time series warehouse. We don't call it a database, we call it a warehouse because it has capabilities which are derived from traditional data warehouses which allow you to handle very high cardinality scenarios. At reasonable costs and we are also keeping the query response times so, so a brief description of what it is it has data warehouse features like read tra traffic shaping streaming aggregations to handle cardinality between this it's better tested at scale uh, it is promptual and open standards compatible that there are actually a token replacement for Prometheus. You don't have to change, and to get started, you don't have to change any instrumentation, anything if you're using Prometheus. Replace, just point your remote right to your right to levitate in your document. Automatically, things are a order of magnitude faster. We have a full alerting suite built in, which is also Prometheus alert manager compatible. So you can migrate all your alerting workflows over here. Really good integration with uh, service 
उसके लिए पेज एडिटिंग ऑब्जेक्ट स्लैग एज वेल सो अदर टीम इज नो लॉन्गर जस्ट अ मैसेज समवेयर इट कैन इंप्लीमेंट अ एंटायर एडिटिंग वर्कफ्लो इन एवरी डे इट इज अ फुल्ली मैनेज ऑफरिंग सो यू जस्ट शिप योर डेटा एंड गिव द अपडेट टू अस uh and compared to the other solutions it's definitely going to have a lower reduced total cost function so that's all i had i don't know whether there are any questions uh we have a booth so 